Hello and welcome to a new South Texas Pride q and I'm Ivan Herrera, and today I'm joined by Robert Salcido, Executive Director of Pride Center San Antonio. Robert, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So today we're going to be discussing the expansion of Pride Center San Antonio's physical footprint. First, can you tell me what led to this project and where it is now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the conversations to expand our footprint um, have been ongoing even before the pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, when the pandemic happened and we uh, reverted everything over to an online uh, remote uh, virtual space, um, the conversations kind of died out. Um, as we are now uh, kind of in the current uh, mode of, of the way that we're operating, uh, we're looking to fully transition back to in-person again. And so the conversation started earlier this year um, of what that would look like um, and the need for additional space, not only to expand the services that we offer, but also to have additional space so that we can still physically distance from one another um, in a safe way, knowing that COVID is still among us. Um, and so uh, those were where the conversations led, um, and we are excited that uh, Methodist uh, Healthcare Systems um, has in-kinded us additional office space that is right next to our current space, um, and uh, we're going to be able to utilize it um, to expand those services uh, come the new year. And we just had Giving Tuesday, and I know that the Pride Center is going to be using proceeds from that and other fundraising to make this expansion happen. Can you tell me more about how those funds get put to use after, you know, they come in? Absolutely. So Giving Tuesday was uh, kind of our catapult for this uh, campaign that we have uh, for the costs that are going directly to the renovations of the new space. Uh, the space that we are acquiring uh, was... Uh, it was used by a doctor's office um, previously, um, and it's so it's, it's very outdated. Um, it it needs some refreshment uh, just in itself because it, it has been used for quite some time by another uh, medical provider. Um, but also, it's very clinical. Um, we we see that the what will serve as our counseling offices. Um, had countertops with sinks in them and very much used for a medical practice that's not really conducive to the work that we do. Um, what we want to do with the funds that we raised from Giving Tuesday, as well as what we raised through the end of this year, is going to really be focused on uh, making the space more affirming and more welcoming uh, for folks to come in that are seeking mental health services like our counseling, our group therapies, or our case management services um, in an environment that does not come across as clinical. Um, which is very, very much important to us to make sure that we are uh, not only providing that safe space for folks, but also a welcoming space that's affirming to who they are as an individual. Yeah, definitely. Anytime I walk into a doctor's office, that's like the thing I, I notice immediately. Of course, this is, you know, counseling, but it's it's still kind of like, you know, part of the healthcare services. So you definitely want an inviting space. So what sort of expanded services will the Pride Center be offering once this project is completed? Yeah, absolutely. So during uh, the pandemic itself, um, prior to we were offering uh, case management services um, as part of our mental health uh, program. Um, during the pandemic itself, we expanded into offering uh, telehealth services uh, for counseling uh, and group therapy. Um, the goal is, is once we're able to uh, renovate this space and open it up to the public um, and to our community, is that we'll be able to add in additional services and see more people for our counseling and group therapy services. Uh, we'll be able to open up the space more for peer support groups um, and really just have an opportunity so that we can offer both online services as well as in-person services. Because we recognize that not everybody um, can take advantage of things online, um, you know, with our digital divide here in San Antonio. Um, but also the fact that, you know, sometimes receiving mental health care services uh, via a virtual platform um, is not the, the person to person feel that somebody might, uh, you know, thrive in better. Um, and so that's what we're looking to do is just really to expand the number of folks that we're able to assist um, and then also expand uh, the way that we, we can assist them, whether that's in person or virtual. Now, you mentioned something about safe spaces a little while ago. Most recently, the discussion of safe spaces in the queer community has been back in the social media spotlight or just in the media spotlight in general, following that mass shooting at Club Q on November 19th. How can safe spaces like the Pride Center help LGBTQ community members who may feel anxious or afraid to be themselves? 
I mean, I think first and foremost with any LGBTQ plus community resource center uh, is they were able to offer a drop in space where somebody can come uh, without judgment. Uh, we uh, can assist them, uh, whether it's with them coming out or with them, um, you know, coping with any of the issues that might be happening in their life, whether it's regarding them being affirmed by their family and friends or colleagues. Um, or just seeking services that are available in the community. Uh, these safe spaces that we can offer, just offer an opportunity so that person knows that uh, despite anything else that might be going on in their life, that their sexual orientation or their gender identity is not going to be something that's going to be held against them or uh, or or judged against them uh, for the, the critical services they might need in order to improve their quality of life. Um, you know, one of the goals of Pride Center is to build as many safe spaces or safer spaces in our communities, um, but certainly we have to start in our own community and offer that uh, as an opportunity for folks to, to feel comfortable um, and, and meet them where they are um, in their journey of, of being an LGBTQ plus identified person or an ally. Definitely. Robert, thank you so much for answering my questions. Where can people reach out to the Pride Center if they want to reach out to you all? Absolutely. So we can be found on all social media platforms, uh, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and uh, LinkedIn. We can also be found um, online at pridecentersa.org. Um, and uh, folks can reach out to us by email um, or phone. Um, and we're happy to uh, receive folks um, in, in a way that best meets their needs as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert Salcido with the Pride Center San Antonio. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.